be able to just make a choice on your own and just be able to speak for yourself. This one's wife, the voodoo doll. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. I turn to the subreddit, saying to this one's wife, they use her full title, as you know, I do not with a rather interesting post which, I thought, merited examination. The post comes from Girl Friday 5150 who explains that she came across an item on Janet Charlton's Hollywood whodunit gossip page. It states as follows... To the outside world looking in, it appears she has it all. Beauty, fame, wealth, and a happy marriage. Well, if we pause there, externally, if you look upon the life of this one's wife, you wouldn't say that she was beautiful, you wouldn't say she was necessarily ugly. There are occasions where she can scrub up reasonably well. There are many occasions where she doesn't look too good. But to say that she is particularly beautiful is perhaps stretching it. She certainly got fame. She certainly got money. She doesn't have a happy marriage, for reasons that I've explained ad infinitum, as a consequence of the dance between the narcissist and the victim. It isn't a happy marriage because she doesn't do happiness as a narcissist. It isn't a happy marriage because Harry's being abused. Nevertheless, there will still be some, with the old rose-tinted spectacles, that would look and say she is beautiful, famous, wealthy, and a happy marriage, and she has this idyllic marriage, and yal, as it's invariably said by sugars, are jealous when they mean envious of her. Nevertheless, the article goes further. To the outside world looking in, it appears she has it all, beauty, fame, wealth, and a happy marriage. But looks can be deceiving. She's actually trapped in a miserable marriage, but she's too financially tied to her spouse to consider divorce. What's a girl to do? Get a voodoo doll. You read that right. Our superstar commissioned a black magic witch to make a voodoo doll with her partner's hair. Behind his back, she torments the doll, hoping to cast a spell. As our source puts it, if something were ha to happen to him, she would play the grieving widow in public, but behind closed doors she'd be the happiest woman alive. Well, this has come from Janet Charleston's Hollywood Who Done It gossip page, as identified by Girl Friday five one five zero on the subreddit Saint This One's Wife. As always, I'm going to leave it to you to determine the veracity of this information. But let's examine it to see could it be something that would be actually accurate. Is she trapped in a miserable marriage? Yes and no. The no is that ultimately she has the power to disengage. As I've explained to you previously, there are various disengagement triggers which cause the narcissist to jettison the intimate partner. Commonly, this is when the narcissist has been engaging romantically with somebody else and the narcissism essentially recognises that person is now under sufficient control and their character traits and residual benefits and their fuel is superior to the person that I'm with, I'm now going to jump ship. So the incumbent 
is jettisoned and they start up a formal relationship, no longer an affair partner, but they become boyfriend-girlfriend with the new individual. And that is one of the most common reasons that takes place in relation to disengagement. Now, there are other reasons that cause disengagement. For instance, the victim just becomes too difficult to control, or the victim has caused massive wounding, massive exposure, or has broken down. Those are all reasons that would prompt a narcissist to disengage from their victim. Thus, to suggest that she to suggest that she is trapped is not entirely accurate because she could disengage from him. However, the problem that arises is that if she were to disengage without a replacement, this would create a rather large hole in her fuel matrix. And also, whilst Harry's residual benefits have been much reduced, it would also strip those existing ones because, despite her best, if we can call it that, attempts to reinvent herself, she's completely failed. Which means that what has she got to offer? She hasn't got any talent. She's not got any charisma. She's just got the royal connection. We've seen time and time again, that's the only reason why she got given the money by Netflix and Spotify, was because they expected her to dish the dirt about royal life. And what she produced was singularly boring uninteresting and has caused others to think no she hasn't anything of interest to provide so the difficulty that she has is that if she were to disengage from harry right now it would rip a huge hole in her fuel matrix and would reduce her residual benefits considerably therefore she needs to find that replacement and it doesn't appear that there is anybody on the horizon so the suggestion that she's trapped, well, it's a yes and no. No, because she ultimately can disengage, and she will, as I pointed out, but it's a temporary state of entrapment. Namely, she isn't able to get rid of him just yet because she doesn't have anybody else lined up, and she is reliant upon him as the chief provider of fuel, and he still does have those appropriate character traits and residual benefits, without which she'd really be a nobody. Is it the case that this causes her to prevent her from considering divorce? Not at all. Divorce will have entered her head on numerous occasions, and undoubtedly she'll have used that as a threat against Harry, telling him, I'm going to divorce you as part of the assertion of control over him. But then let's move on to the most entertaining part of this suggestion, namely that she's got a voodoo doll. We don't know whether she has or whether she has not. But is it something that a narcissist might do? Yes. The reason being is that narcissists are prone to magical thinking. Narcissists believe themselves to be special. Now, some narcissists are. Some narcissists are hugely talented, but many aren't. They're mediocre, and they think that they are something superior to what they actually are. They believe that they have special powers. For instance, a common one is that they believe that everybody fancies them or wants to be friends with them from the moment they meet them. That they have that delusion that just speaking to somebody meant, oh, he fancied me. And anybody else would think, he, he just had a conversation with you. But the narcissist believes that the man fancied her. It goes further. Certain narcissists believe they've got special powers, that they can control people through the use of their mind, that they can make certain things happen, that they can control the weather, that they can cause things to manifest if they believe in it sufficiently. We've seen that repeatedly as part of the magical thinking of this one's wife, where she has sought through the placing of information to cause things to manifest in relation to sponsorship and invitations, etc., which have fallen spectacularly flat. With regard to a voodoo doll, this is something 
that a passive-aggressive, cowardly, middle-mid-range narcissist might well do. It's a form of triangulation. That if she got hold of some of the old thinning ginger thatch and caused a voodoo doll to be created, she would then utilize that as a form of magical thinking by sticking pins in it and sticking its head into a candle flame or smashing it against a door frame, etc., in order to cause harm to Prince Harry, giving her an indirect sense of control. She triangulates him with this object, with the voodoo doll. It wouldn't surprise me that if her mother had some form of links with a black witch, she seems to be an individual that would be particularly susceptible to that kind of nonsense. And whilst, as I state, there's no confirmation one way or the other as to whether she actually has a voodoo doll, it is something that conceivably a narcissist would engage in, more so than other people, because of that need for control, but also that magical thinking of believing I have the power to control somebody else through a doll. Empathic people wouldn't go there, or would certainly be less inclined to do so. Perhaps in desperation, if they were being particularly badly abused, they might, I suppose, think about it as a consequence of the diminution of their emotional thinking. But for the most part, they're not affected by the magical thinking that a narcissist is. Instead, they would think that that's not a pleasant thing to do. Normals would just think it a load of nonsense. But for a narcissist, believing themselves to be special, and driven by that narcissistic need for control, linked to their magical thinking, it's entirely conceivable that a narcissist would believe that a voodoo doll would give them the power to assert control over another individual, and therefore that their narcissism would lead them down that route. So, next time you see Harry and he makes a peculiar expression in public or bends over or suddenly grips his elbow, perhaps it's because this one's wife is jabbing a pin somewhere into a voodoo doll of ginger bollocks. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.